producer what do you say okay um officially welcome to the uh, portfolio management webinar um it does have a lot um few different webinars that i'm going to try to cover this whole topic in it's a bigger topic so the first two stages strategy and definition is what i'm covering today um and and really the aim of these two stages is to make sure right projects are identified for the objective of the company so um, in a second, I'm going to show you what the uh, six stages are, and we're going to try to break two stages per webinar. Um, and really, is this is this is a part of management system undertaking uh, of an AI approach that we have um, in parallel with the operational improvement uh, work stream. So today I'll cover portfolio management, what it is, and why we need it. What are the six stages, and then we'll get into, as I said. Uh, the two first two stages, strategy, alignment, what strategic drivers, defining your objectives underneath it, and then really doing the second stage, which is about uh, project um, definition. Um, okay, let me let me go through this right now. So, what is portfolio ma uh, management process? It is a way to improve project selection for a given company, right? So. In any organization um, who has capital projects, you usually would have some kind of a, a strategic plan uh, which will focus on indicated results, um, not only just you know the objective of individual project, but a company organization what what the project may look like uh, or what project you may need. Uh, it's also a method of ensuring the best projects are properly resourced, regardless of the site. Uh, and then. Um, it also ensures that you have a method to track those projects, a method to uh, properly define the business case, method to properly understand the risk of doing and uh, not doing the projects. And uh, more importantly, uh, I think for me, this allows the whole thing to come together where you can we can look at what are we about to do, uh, what are what are we about to undertake as projects, and how does it um, connect to the bigger picture. The goals that we have. So here are the uh, six stages. Um, strategy is where it starts. Then you actually get into project identification and uh, definition. That leads to your verification and prioritization stage. This is where you're trying to verify the, the information in the project is good enough. It fills the needs of what we're trying to do, and then and prioritize that based on the amount of funds we have or resources we have. Finally, once the project has been prioritized and and uh, approved. There is the two stages which make sure the projects are on track and they deliver what we said we were going to deliver, so the validation phase. We'll cover all these in different webinars. The first two is what I will focus, so let's, let's look at those now. So under strategy, uh, really what you're trying to do is provide visibility of strategic drivers and operational objectives to the departments, to the people, to the organization, so they understand that if they're, they have identified a project, uh, does it link properly to the strategic drivers and objectives? And if not, what kind of project they need to do? So what are the first steps? Uh, identify the KPIs that should be aligned for project identification. Uh, definition, validation, and prioritization. Those are the next stages uh, in the portfolio management system. So what a KPI or goal may look like. So it could be you know, reducing costs, uh, be it operational maintenance, uh, be it uh, reducing costs of specific area, but if you have that as strategic driver and then associate our objective, then obviously there'll be a KPI that we can use to measure how much of a project is going to impact that um, and, and validate at the end did, did it actually make that difference. Uh, it talks about zero-based budgeting philosophy here. This is a good one, a good thing to uh, tie your strategy uh, definition to. Uh, it's not necessary, but it's usually good. What in, in simplest term, what that means is you're looking at your cost fresh every year, right? And you're not looking at, uh, I spent X million dollars or X thousand dollars last year, so I, I have to have that same amount for next year. No, it just says, what are we trying to do this year? And then start rebuilding your costs. That's what the zero-based budgeting philosophy is. 
Another objective could be improving production. So this is the one that most people understand. In in um, it could be in the form of throughput. So we produce so much X units. How can we improve or produce more? Uh, recoveries or uh, quality is about um, how much defect are we producing uh, in our production and can we improve on that? And the productivity is really about efficiency. Uh, how we can get the best use of our resources. Um, overall, it's equipment effectiveness philosophy, just like in the cost, there is zero based budgeting. In the production side, you could use OEE or overall equipment effectiveness. It, it really is a systematic way of uh, quantifying your uh, efficiency. Um, I won't go into details uh, today for that. Another KPI or another driver could be reducing risk to the business. It could be health, safety, environment, sustainability, asset integrity, or any, anything else, right? Like sometimes there's regulatory stuff as well in there. The idea is if you have a risk, you should have uh, a way of reducing it, and some projects should be about that. Uh, legal requirements, as you say, underneath, that could be regulatory part. And then other company policies, strategic initiatives, such as ERP implementation, annual capital development in mining, or anything else that the company wants to do under their strategy, which might not be part of these drivers, could be set as a strategic driver, and then you can have projects underneath it. So once you have those drivers, once you have those objectives, what are the steps? You need to identify where you are, where you should, where you aim to going. So that's the baseline and technical limits for each KPI that you call strategic. Calculate the contribution, positive or negative, of existing under execution projects with KPIs. So if, if we're starting today, we look at projects that are already done last year and how much of an impact those projects have on those current KPIs. Calculate the gaps and then define the multi-year targets, how we're gonna try to go there. We don't have to go from zero to 100 in one year, uh, if not, if the need is not there. And then uh, figure out how much of a jump we wanna make and what projects we need from there. Um, yeah, and then you can you can use that information to identify right projects and rank them and prioritize them. So here's an example. Um, let's pick a KPI. It's, it's like a betterment kind of KPI. So by betterment, what do I mean? That we're trying to improve uh, either the throughput or recoveries or efficiencies, or whatever. So in this case, the example is that we have strategic KPI. We want to go from 70 where we are today to 95 in the next five years. That's just a unit. Uh, and we have three projects identified um, over the two years. So that's what that means. We started at 70, we have a gap of 25. I have two projects which can close that gap um, to 10 uh, in the first year. And then the project A will still deliver something in the second year. Uh, and project C could be added in the, in the 2024. And then we still have a gap of three, which can be closed by project A. Actually, this project A is going to deliver even one more at the uh, in the fourth year, which means that I actually will be above my goal of 95 within the four years with the three projects I have. So if, if I knew these three projects are going to deliver this and that's a business case, then I'm good with this KPI. I don't need any other projects. However, if I have a strategic um, KPI or a driver where I have a big gap and no projects in defined, here's here's what that information then leads to for me to define define projects. So each KPI we talked about in the last slide, we should make sure that we're doing this exercise. We're trying to figure out where we are, where we want to be, what are our multi-year goals, and then figure out which project gets us what, right? Sometimes you will have, and this will come into project definition and verification. Sometimes you may have a project which hits multiple KPIs, uh, which is okay. But you gotta, you have to make sure that you're not double counting. Okay. Okay. So let's look at the definition side of things. Um, this is, I think, most people understand this, but the aim here is to standardize this across the organization. So for each um, project which is required to meet operational and business objective, we should be doing um, a standardization based on the type of the project. So, for example. Uh, if you have betterment projects, I would standardize what information I need for those betterment projects for to, for them to be uh, considered, for them to be verified. Similarly, for replacement, sustainable development, research and development, I don't spend time explaining those in this webinar, but very quickly, betterment are about you trying to improve on something, so improve throughput, improve recoveries. Replacement is you're trying to replace something or um, uh, maintain repairs, um, like for like replacement. Uh, like your equipment. 
sustainable development, they are about, you know, improving um, your social risk, your health risk, your environmental risk, and then R&D or research development are, is pure either your um, uh, technology um, research uh, or research about a, a new way of doing things, or in mining time, uh, mining companies, they also use R&D for exploration kind of uh, projects as well. But the idea is that those are four major buckets, and based on the four, four major buckets, you can actually standardize the information you need out of each project, which falls into there. You don't have to standardize for all four, you have to standardize per category, because you will be comparing different things for each project to judge the merit of the project. Okay, so once you have that, identify project indicators based on project deliverables, link them to strategic KPIs. This is the conversation we just had in the last slide about making sure that each project identifies how much of an impact it will make. That will be the X in the equation of the Y, which is the KPI, right? So if Y is made up of three projects, I'm gonna count the X1, X2, X3 to see how much of a gap is there. And that will ensure also that we're not overlapping uh, the gains. Established uh, business case for each project using three-point estimates and Monte Carlo approach. You'll see this um, come back uh, quite a few times in, in our topics in our webinars. Um, using a single point estimate, um, you miss out usually on what the risk is there. So if you're saying a project has a business case or value of bringing you 100 million, for example, I don't want to know what that 100 million means. What is the probability of, or certainty of that 100 million is? Or is that, is that on average? Is that on a P80, P20? Uh, that, that's why we would always recommend that you use at least three-point estimates, best case, worst case, most likely case, and then uh, use a Monte Carlo approach to come up with the business case or risk definition. All information capture need to be standardized as much as possible. We talked about this. Um, basic projects such as title, description, site, department must be placed to build standard quality. Um, so sometimes I've seen people will have these templates that people fill out and not everything is, is expected to be filled out. And sometimes it's, it's overlooked because if you have the cash flow or if you have the NPV or if you have the uh, risk reduced reduction information, that's usually good enough. But if you're trying to have a proper pro a portfolio management system, you need to make sure that you have all these things in there because they become important in the later stages, prioritization, then you have to reduce your budget, you have to switch your strategy halfway through the year. This, this is the information where you can filter, uh, filter the project's output. Um, obviously, uh, cash flow information, either it will be NPV for betterment projects or total cost of ownership for replacement type projects, it needs to be there. That's how you're gonna, it's gonna be one major factor when you start prioritizing. Each project must conduct the risk assessment of not doing the project uh, and provide associated scores for probability and consequences. I have a slide later on, we'll, we'll go through it so you understand what that means if you don't know, but really is the two main lenses. One is the financial impact and one is the risk that is trying to reduce. Uh, each project must detail a schedule and forecast for the completion. Uh, so the project then can be tracked and adhered to once in execution. So there's two reasons for it. One is, is to make sure that you know once a project is approved, we don't forget about it. We we keep on track to say you know this is how it was supposed to develop. Um, my supply chain friend sitting across from me, he all also wants to use that information to make sure that you're better prepared to provide everything you need for that that project to stay on track. And then finally, once the we get to the validation uh, phase at the end, we want to be able to see how good we were at forecasting and scheduling and adhering to it. Uh, which will make the things better in future. So these are some of the things that I picked out of the project definition, which are important. So problem statement, um, make sure you have an overall description of the project or opportunity you're trying to do. Uh, must identify who the customer is, meaning who is gonna who's gonna feel the pain if the project is not done. And usually that is a good place to start looking for the information or start building the change management of that project as it's being defined. Objective statements, make sure there is a purpose to the project. Uh, start with a verb. For example, eliminate, reduce, increase, whatever it might be. Avoid multiple verbs because usually a second word means that you have multiple projects or two phases of the project at least. Separate them as two phases if you if you can. Use smart um, technique to, to identify the goals, link to the objective. Um, and this is where you want to quantify, you know, what what 
part of the pain or part, part of the opportunity we're going to realize out of this project. And if you already have a link to strategic driver, this is where you want to link it. Project scopes, well, so define the boundaries of the project with goals in that comes out. Um, uh, meaning, if you if you imagine a imagery, sorry, if you imagine a sandbox where your project is, then what is part of the project, what is not part of the project, again leads to proper definition, proper identification of resources, risks, and everything else. Identify metrics that are linked to the objective. We talked about the X and Y, how it's linked to the strategic driver, because they, but there could be other um, KPIs of the project. So there is a strategic link. But there is also things that it's going to improve um, as a secondary objective, or you may have multiple different things being improved out of the same project. So you want to identify it there uh, and put it in there. Uh, leading and lagging is a good good one to understand. So leading indicators are something that the project would directly impact, and you will see it as well quickly. Versus lagging would be a, there's an indirect impact, and it will take some time before that that KPI gets improved. Identify vulnerable or negative indicators. So usually there's also uh, a negative KPI or it's not a negative KPI, but a KPI that is vulnerable to your project, meaning by doing this project, you could negatively impact something else. So if there is a case like this, you want to identify it and have part of the project um, definition because that, A, uh, you can keep an eye on it that the project is not working on something which could be um, negative for other part of the company. B, uh, this is something which when you go to prioritize, we can use um, as to look at if this is the best project possible or the same KPI. Uh, some of the financial information key questions, make sure that um, you look at, do you have you looked at all the incre incremental costs for the project? For example, extra personnel, repair facilities, training, right? It's not just about capital and equipment. Um, have we considered appropriate repair costs, sustaining capital in later years to rebuild? So it's not just one time, maybe if you're if you're changing some piece of equipment or some piece of the process, what are the sustaining capital you're going to need for that? Uh, have we considered appropriate project evaluation period? Um, you know, for example, um, 20 years of cost, I think, for a piece of equipment that will only last 10 years. It's, it's not obviously correct. Um, if performing a total cost of ownership evaluation, have we looked into the all costs associated with that option? For instance, if refurbishing a piece of equipment will only last five years, have the additional rental costs been considered following that period? Like, um, you know, you should, if the project gets 10 years, then we should have the rest of the five years in there as well. These are just some, some guidelines and hints that, you, you know, we will get involved and we will walk through. Uh, if we're helping somebody do the project definition phase of the portfolio management system. Um, you know, we'll leave the rest here. Risk assessment. Um, so usually every organization will have a asset integrity or risk uh, criteria, risk matrix. You can use the same one. Um, generally speaking, there are two, two factors. There's the probability or likelihood of something happening. And then if it happens, what are the severity or consequence that you, that goes with it? Um, the the hints or the uh, tricks here uh, would be that, you know, you should also include bottlenecks part of the same conversation because a bottleneck um, usually would be the factor that will stop uh, you from getting the benefit of a project if it if it does not work on the bottleneck itself. So make sure when you're evaluating the projects, the bottlenecks are well understood. And if you have a project which impacts the bottleneck, uh, meaning it improves the bottleneck, then it should get an extra rating ranking in the in in some of some kind of a lens of your organization when you do prioritize. But uh, you know, conversely speaking, if it's not impacting a bottleneck, then you have to be careful to see how much of a diff, uh, distance you have between the improvement and the bottleneck right, in your organization. Because maybe all the benefit that the project is uh, proposing is not going to make it to the bottleneck. So, so make sure that you've given some thought to it. Uh, risk must be evaluated for not doing the project should not be about additional generation of revenue. So I'll go through an example, but the idea is that a betterment project which adds extra cash to the company this is, it's not necessarily a risk to the company, right? So it, it really depends on the project and where the company is, right? So if I don't do that project, is there a risk to the company today? If the answer is yes, then you want to evaluate the, and identify the risk. 
but if it's all about you know doing things better uh, more efficiency and that gets me more money we don't have a risk right now that the company is going to fold because of it then you shouldn't be quantifying that as a risk replacements sustainable development r d all should have proper risk evaluation conducted these are the ones which usually will not return usually not return cash um, positive so you have to kind of know what you're trying to do so it's actually about uh, reducing the cost or reducing the risk, which is going to hurt later on. Um, some of the definitions um, when you're doing risk assessments, event we call this is a failure which occur if project is not implemented. Uh, event is only what the failure is, not what consequences are. So once you have identified that, you can then talk about, you know, what is the chances of that event actually occurring? So that's the likelihood piece. So it's, for example, is it going to happen tomorrow or is it going to happen in 100 years from now or within the 100 years from now? That, that has, should have a different impact. And then the third piece is, uh, so, okay, I, I know what the event is. I know what the likelihood is. But if it does occur, uh, then what is the consequence, right? Consequence could be financial, could be health and safety, could be environment, could be social, could be reputational, um, and or could be any other factor that you have in your organization, right? So you have to kind of understand that. The two other things which are important to do in risk um, assessment is the preventative and mitigative controls. Preventive controls are, um, they prevent from the occurrence of the event. So they're, they're basically about reducing the likelihood from happening. And the mitigating controls are, uh, if the event does happen, how we can reduce the severity of the event. So, so those are two different types of controls that you can look into. And usually part of this portfolio management system, the idea would be that when you're doing this assessment, you want to identify all the preventative mitigative controls because they could be the alternatives to the project which is being uh, proposed or identified. Okay, so let's look at, um, I'm not gonna go through all different project types, but these, I picked a couple from our uh, past experience, which are kind of, um, good to look at so here is a replacement administrative project is about current on-site employee residential building so a camp needs major renovations in order to house employees and contractors during operations operator and, and contractors are hesitant to use the building its current state is not good this could result in a strike block it to request decent living conditions okay so that's the situation failure event in this case uh, when we did this uh, this is a real example by the way was identified as building collapses. So we're, we're looking at something, um, uh, not just you know a strike happening, but building collapsing is, is the event. What is the likelihood? It's not in a good shape. It could happen anytime. What are the preventive controls in place? We can do increased ins inspection. We can do corrective maintenance, um, which will probably have an impact on likelihood. Uh, and then when you actually try to evaluate what is the risk score impact, it's not much, right? You're not gonna, it's in a stage, if it can collapse anytime, any extra inspections or corrective maintenance or bandages is not gonna help. So what are the severity of consequences? Financial workers go on strike, uh, production stops for a month. This is the estimate of that, that facility. Health and safety, obviously there's your big impact, multiple fatalities possible. Uh, it's a building collapse to the people in there. Environmental, there's no, no environmental uh, stuff being um, uh, stay, uh, stored in that building. Social, obviously, huge impact, repetitional, huge impact, could be prosecution, moderate fines. So, what is the mitigating control? Having a communication committee with the employee may result in reduced risk of strike and production loss. This could be less than a month. So, financial severity could be reduced to 750,000 instead of 1.25 million. However, the other as consequences which are there have it has no impact on it so risk reward score in this case will stay high uh, based on the consequence we have and the likelihood we would have so that's just an example of how you would do these kind of projects so it has no npv uh, impact most likely when you're going to build a new camp or anything but it does have a huge impact on the risk that that can be reduced so if we flip this conversation and look at a betterment productive project so in this case, we're trying to increase capacity of an existing refinery facility um, instead of you know selling the con to to the third party. Failure event, there is none. There is actually no risk um, to do this. Um, I mean, to the business right now. And likely, as there's no event, there's no likelihood. So what are the risk ratings to this? 
consequences, there are none, right? Because if the event doesn't occur, likelihood doesn't occur, the severity doesn't occur. The risk score for this project is actually going to be zero, meaning no risk. And all this, this project has to be evaluated on is the positive impact of the financial return, in this case, MPV, which is probably good enough to, do, to look at the project itself. Okay, uh, here's another one for sustainable development. Uh, tailing dam upgrades as part of assets degree schedule. Uh, failure event, dam fails. Likelihood could happen within the next 10 years. Preventive controls increase expectation and regular maintenance. Uh, not much will change for dam failures because obviously there's a timeline, there's a, there's a structural integrity thing here. Huge, huge impacts, obviously, on the consequence side of things. Uh, new dam, multiple facilities, flooding of surrounding communities, depending on where the dam is. Uh, tailing leaks into nearby environment, causing environmental issues, social impacts, prosecutions, revoking of license, all is possible, right, if you don't do this. Mitigating controls, diverting the order production to nearby facility may result in reduced reduce production loss. Financial severity could be reduced. However, again, it will have no, no impact on the other ones because your dam is still there. You still have uh, tails in it. It needs to be fixed. Okay. So again, a project which has no NPV attached but has a huge risk attached, so it will help. If you did the risk rating properly, uh, when the conversation comes about prioritizing or we all live this uh, after prioritization, maybe the first round of cuts or second round of cuts, this is the kind of information you need to ensure the project doesn't get overlooked. Okay, uh, that was my last slide. So just very quickly on our approach, uh, most company who have capital or sustaining capital projects, but usually are uh, that we've dealt with, are usually missing the rigor to ensure the right projects are identified, prioritize, and then track. So my aim out of this webinar and out of the next few webinars that I'm going to do in this series to make sure that people understand what those uh, portfolio management system components are and how you can maybe take some of them and implement them in your, your organization. How do we usually start doing this is to understand what the process currently you have for project definition, prioritization, and tracking. Because those are the three that people usually, or organizations usually have, even if they don't have the rest of the three. Um, and then in a de deployment of portfolio management system, our focus will be on, you know, Activity is critical for building the system components and not the individual project definition. So we're not usually after just saying, Okay, this project is great for the company and we want to make sure this project passes. That's not the intent. The intent is to have a system which will allow the good projects to go through. And like anything else, our um, focus usually is on, on coaching people as well. Okay. So um, I'll go through the questions now. Um, just a reminder, we do have those polls questions usually. Um, if you can also look at them, that would be great. Let me skip all this and go to the questions. Uh, why don't I see them here? Questions, activities. Just give me a second. Sorry, did you put it in chart? Maybe. Yeah, okay. in chart. Sorry. Okay. Uh, could you tie one of your examples into graphics shared on the earlier slide? There was 10 products needed to, to get the 96. Yeah, um, so basically the KPI there is going to be risk reduction of some sort, right? So you will have a gap like you are sitting at um, a very high risk, which is quantifiable, right? So you usually you get a scale of 0 to 100, and then depending on how many projects you have um, on the high end, you will score them according to that. That is your gap, right? And then you're trying to bring the projects to close that gap. So you may, like I, in, in the prioritization ex, uh, stage that when I present, I'll show you some example of the prioritization lenses where it looks at that, where you can look at just a risk rating for the company, which is looking at all the different severities, all the different consequences. So from financial, health and safety, all, all of it, right, to the end. Or you can actually just look at environmental impact or you can just look at the health and safety impact, right, uh, as a lens. And then the KPI, if it's about health and safety risk, then your projects are just try looking at how you close it. So your problem, you may have five projects trying to work on the same same risk, right? And uh, it, it becomes important when you do the prioritization to see which projects. But that will be the example for their chart. Yeah. 
Any other uh, questions? Okay, please feel free to um, reach out to me if you have any questions or you want to ask uh, individually on the side, like uh, you have access to my email. Um, and then, as I said, we'll we'll make sure that this video gets posted online. Um, and, and that's it.